Hey guys, it's Will. You're watching Adventures in Anime. Today we're going to be talking about Lily Cat. Cat spelled like an acronym, like C period, A period, T period. Uh, this is episode two of this series. And this movie was released in 1987. I have my notes here because uh, the whole point of this series is that I don't really know anything about anime, so I had to come prepared. Uh, it was released in 1987, and it's like sci-fi kind of horror. I would call it more sci-fi with influence from horror. I've seen people call it just like straight sci-fi horror. And uh, those, and if this information means anything to you, it was directed and written by Hisayuki Toriyumi, who uh, I was involved in like a lot of really um, like foundational early anime, like Speed Racer, obviously is the one that I've heard of that I think a lot of people know about. It's extremely famous. And then something called Space Ninja Team Gachaman, which sounds amazing, but I never even heard of, who apparently is very influential early anime. So tell me if you think I should watch that and tell me what else you think I should watch in the comments below. That would be great. Thank you very much. Um, so what this movie is basically like, so first I'll say I really enjoyed this movie. It's very pulpy and it has no pretense to being anything more than just like an entertaining, pulpy, um, like violent, quick piece of entertainment. It's only like 65 minutes. And I read that there, I read somewhere that there's a Japanese cut that's like 10 minutes longer, but I couldn't find definitive information on that, so I don't actually know. So if you know that, you could tell us too. Tell us the history of this movie and what versions there are. Apparently that version is more violent, although the version I watched was pretty violent. Um, so this movie is essentially Alien, the 1979 original, meets The Thing. So you have these people who are working for a corporation who go on this spaceship, who get put in like the deep sleep, who are way, way out in space, and they get woken up because some kind of organic life form has found its way onto the ship. The difference between this and Alien is the the organic life form is nothing like the xenomorph in Alien. And this is where the comparisons to the thing come in. It's really similar to the alien in the thing because you can't see it. And it has the ability to like infiltrate people's bodies. And I won't get, I'm not giving away too much. This is all like information that comes up pretty early on. And but there are a couple scenes in here, in like two in particular that I'm thinking of, that are like basically just taken straight from the thing, the John Carpenter version. Uh, um, and there's a cat in this movie in the same way that it, there's the dogs in the thing, right? They're dogs or wolves. Are they dogs, Mike, or wolves? They're, they're, they're like huskies. That's yeah, they're animals. like they're sled dogs, right? So there's a cat yeah. and alien. Yeah, but there's a, there's a cat in uh, this movie that performs the same function, basically, that the dogs perform in the thing. If you've seen the thing and you know the dogs, then you know what I'm talking about. So, uh, the, the one thing that's added to this that I actually found to be really interesting and really enjoyed is there's a mystery on top of the alien thing. So these people come out of their deep sleep and they're dealing with the fact that some kind of the ship is telling them like this organic life form is on board. There's even like they talk to the ship through a computer and the ship talks back to them and the ship is named Mother. Is that the name of the ship in Alien? Mother, like the, the computer system? I think it is. Um... But it, this is also the English language version, so it's dubbed, and all the text on screen is converted into English. And so it's entirely possible that the people who made the English language version called the computer Mother because of Alien to try to sell it on the back of the success of Alien or something like that. I don't actually know in the original Japanese version what the computer is called. Um, so the, the, the ship tells them that there's a life form aboard, and they're all woken up, and... They then get a video message from Earth that's been waiting for them for years or, like, I think the, their mission is 40 years, like 20 years out, 20 years back. Um, and they are told that there are two people on the ship who are not who they were told they were. And they might be criminals, they might be, like, pirates, like, you don't really know who they are. And so the crew has to, because the crew is not a crew that always works together. It's a bunch of people who are put together by this corporation to go and do this mission. So they are still getting to know each other, and two of them are not who they say they are. And what's really well done about this movie is that the, so typically in a, it's kind of structured like a TV episode, right? And typically in a TV episode, you have plot lines that are labeled after like letters of the alphabet, right? So there's like an A plot, a B plot, and in more complicated shows, you get C plots, D plots, whatever. And um, it, so if the A plot is the story of the alien life form and the B plot is this mystery of who are these people um, who snuck aboard, the two plots tie together in a way that's like really satisfying and very kind of organic. And it works really well. So it's like really, really good, concise 
writing. And like I said, I think this is 67 minutes. So it's almost 70 minutes, but it's like the amount of material that this covers and the amount of drama and the amount of violence and the amount of excitement that's in this movie in 67 minutes is kind of like, oh, this is, it's like you get a lot of bang for your buck, basically. Um, the, I guess the one other thing I'll say about this before I get out of your hair, because I don't want to rabbit on for too long here, is that, and this is something that probably to a lot of anime viewers is like, duh, but um, as someone who doesn't watch a ton of animation, this never really occurred to me, but I'm watching this movie that came out in 1987, and you think about space movies in 1987, there were severe technological limitations on what you could do in terms of showing space travel and objects moving through space and stuff like that, and in animation, there are no limitations at all, right? Whatever you can conceive of, whatever you can draw, can be there. And so I see, I really see the attraction of animation, especially in the 80s, to people doing like heavy sci-fi. Because it's like, well, if I, you know, made this movie as a live action film, it would cost some ungodly amount of money. It would be really, really, really hard, if not impossible to make. And instead... I can draw it, and anything that I can think of can exist on the screen. So that is, and there's there's a lot of stuff in this movie where watching it, I'm like, you couldn't have done that in a live action movie in 1987. So the movie's called Lily Cat. It was really fun. It's very pulpy, um, really enjoyable if you're a big fan of sci-fi or horror or anything like that. Um, and I would highly recommend it. If you have more recommendations for me, um, you can add them in the comments section. We're already getting like a pretty long list. So I got a lot of stuff to watch, which I'm really excited about. Uh, and um, my name is Will. This has been Adventures in Anime, and I will see you next time. <laughs>